I care about what's true. Um, I mean, do you actually believe in your Muslim faith? Do you believe that Muhammad split the moon in two? Do you believe that Muhammad flew to heaven on a winged horse, for example? I, I pay you the compliment of assuming that you, that you don't. No, I do. I believe in miracles. You believe that? Yes. You believe that Muhammad went to heaven on a winged horse? Yes, I believe in God. I believe in miracles. I believe in revelation. I mean, the point here is that let's assume I'm wrong, Richard. I'm yeah, wrong. let's. Um... Let, let's assume I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm wrong. I'm happy to concede that, Richard. I'm happy to concede it. I'm wrong. All religions are wrong. God does not exist. We're all mad. I care about what's true. I'm an educator. I'm a scientist. And I want people to understand the truth about the universe in which they live. That's what I care about. And I regard religion as a, a, a distraction, uh, and in some cases a pernicious distraction, from true education. Uh, which, I, which I love and value the way you value and love your God. Can you not do both? Well, so long as or they don't contradict each other. There's a divide, Richard. As long as they don't divide. contradict each other. But, but um, if, you, if, you, if you actually believe Mohammed flew to heaven on a winged horse, that's an anti-scientific belief. And that could be wrong. But well, that it well is wrong. But I mean, that doesn't change... Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't change... Uh, how do you know it's wrong? Oh, come on. You're a man of the 21st century. No, I'm You're just asking. It comes back to my original question. The, the well, rational position is the agnostic. I mean, the rational position is the agnostic position. Why up there? What, the I mean, the know, rational position. I, I didn't say up there. I didn't pick a place. Okay, well, what, a place. Why would a winged um, horse be the, be the way to get to heaven if uh, it's not up there? I, I, asked, I, asked, I asked a question about... You asked about proof. I'm all for saying I can't prove it. But can you prove he didn't do it? <laughs> I mean, this is, this is the end-old debate. Can I prove he didn't fly to heaven this is on the a end, I'm horse. just asking on your criteria. I'm just asking on no, your criteria. No, I can't prove it, and I can't prove it wasn't a golden unicorn. But I'm or fascinated or... that you'd rather... I'm fascinated that you'd rather talk about uh, what animals the Prophet may or may not have used 1,400 years ago, rather than talk about what Muslims or Islam is doing in the world today, good or bad. Well... Uh, that uh, seems to be the distraction. If anyone's okay. distracted, it seems to be you. Well, that, that, that's, your, that's your view. I'm fascinated by how somebody, a, a, a respected, sophisticated journalist in the 21st century, can believe that a prophet flew to heaven on a winged horse. Let me ask you this. Are all people who hold beliefs in God and in miracles and the supernatural, do you regard them all as intellectually inferior to you? I regard those beliefs as intellectual nonsense. Um, I don't regard the individuals as intellectually inferior to me because many of them palpably are not. If you a personal question from me. You talk about how um, to teach children that there is one God or that God created the world in six days, that is child abuse. To even teach your children religion is child abuse. So, I have a daughter. I teach her about Islam and the horse. Am I guilty of child abuse? Do you, do you teach her the world was created in six days? No, because Islam doesn't teach that, Richard. I'm delighted to hear that. I asked... OK, let's open up to the audience. We've been talking about God, evil, war, terrorism, bringing up your children, living a good life, religion and happiness, science versus religion. Who would like to answer the first question? Yes, you. If the almighty God appears suddenly on the cloud or on the earth or part of the universe, what is your reaction. Are you going to believe or are you going to go against him? What would it take for you to believe in God, not just miracles? Yeah, I mean... Popping his head through the clouds. Yeah, that, that, that's the thing I've, I've worried about a lot. Um, <laughs> obviously... <laughs> it would do wonders for the book. The re would the world be a better place if religion disappeared tomorrow? Uh, yes. Uh, it's about all the good things we discussed yeah. that you recognise. <laughs> And it, it does make me chuckle that you mock me for believing in a prophet that flies into a heaven, but you believe in lots and lots of universes that you can't show me, prove to me, test to me in a lab, as a basis of getting out of believing in a god and a prophet. I'm astonished that you should compare the two. Um, I'm, really, I'm comparing is, the lack of evidence for the two. Well, you cannot use your own intuitive common sense in order to diss 
physics. I mean, if, if you could do that, we wouldn't need physicists. I mean, they, they are very sophisticated people. They do mathematics. But there they, are physicists like Paul Davis who have dissed the multiverse theory as being nonsense. Well, Paul Davis would rather take the view that there's something mysterious in the origin of the universe, and that's a, another perfectly respectable physicist's view. Steven Weinberg, the Nobel oh, Prize winning physicist. It's respectable if a physicist holds a view about mystery in the universe, but not if anyone else holds it. If we're talking about the origin of the universe, that is a problem in physics, yes. Let's end with a couple of quick questions. If, as Christopher Hitchens, the late Christopher Hitchens wrote, religion is ineradicable, and as you put it, harder to get rid of than smallpox, uh, doesn't this basically mean that whatever motivations you have, no matter how passionately you're driven and love for the truth, you are essentially wasting your time? I would never admit to wasting my time trying to propagate the truth and I think I can claim a modicum of success with the people that I've written, have read my books, the people who've attended my lectures. Um, it's a doctrine of despair to say that we're stuck with religion for all eternity. Um, the religions of ancient Greece and ancient Rome and the Vikings are all dead. Nobody believes in Jupiter or Thor anymore. And I have great hopes that the same is going to be true of the, of the God of Abraham.